if you remember, that we're working on different types of structures. We've looked at trusses. Now, uh, it's not all that important just what the different structures were because the analysis goes pretty much the same. Um, it can be method of joints, method of se sections, or any com combination thereof to get all the parts you're looking for. Uh, we also looked at frames and we'll take a look at machines. We'll probably get to that in a little bit. We're going to do a, a, a different type of structure problem. Uh, just to show you that uh, the, the term, I guess, can be a, a little more um, loosely applied than just to structures themselves. So here's a here's that's my Datsun, my 1967 Datsun pickup, and my custom Airstream trailer. What? Does anybody know what Datsun? Like a lot of you guys don't even know what Datsun means. Too young. You heard of Datsun cars? That's what Nissan used to be. <laughs> All right, don't don't hijack guys and your testosterone levels just went way up. Everybody got one? All right. All right. We want to find. The reaction at D, where the trailer connects to the truck. Got to make sure that's strong enough. We can also find out the, the reaction at the tires. Uh, I will tell you, notice it's on a, a slight slope. And the parking brake on the truck is set. So you have to decide what that means. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks for sharing that on the tape, Alan. Was a silver. All right. So there, it's parked there on the hillside because the parking brake on the truck is set. What, Mr. Amker? What's a kip? What's a kip? What's K stand for? Kilo. Kilo. P stands for pounds, so that's a kilopound. Kill a witch pound? No, no. Yeah, for kip. For kilo. Because kip is in a more interesting to say than kip. No, no, this is a, a standard term. Thousand pounds, half a ton. Kilopound, a kip. Do the moment and you get kilopound inches, that's a pinch. Nice. <laughs> Alright, so parking brake set, you need to find the reaction at D. You need to make sure that this is stout enough to hold the trailer. My family's in there. More than that, my widescreen TV's in there. And my shotguns are in there for in case I need to stop and shoot squirrels. <laughs> or if we're in the camping place, we get attacked by squirrels. Could this be regarded as a truss or a frame? Not that it terribly matters, you still have to do basically the same thing.
<laughs> How about tilting nothing? How about doing the problem just like it lays? So your boss doesn't think, oh no, this guy can't even handle a 10 degree slope. Maybe I better get somebody in here who can. As far as I know, Alan, you don't have permission to move the earth 10 degrees. Decide well. I don't know. Do you need to decide that the uh, whether the, the my statement about the parking brake has anything to do with it? Could be a red herring. Oh, yeah. Another 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 thing you can go hunting. Huh? Go hunting for red herrings. You know what a red herring is? Extraneous information. Information that doesn't have anything to do with the uh, problem and may mislead you. So is my statement about the parking brake such? I guess everybody's I content. No. Everybody's content with their decisions about the parking brake. The parking brake on the truck is set. Some of the trailers have brakes. set, the thing would start rolling down the hill and we would not have a statics problem. We have a dynamics problem. That's, I didn't think about that. By, by those, Alan, have you talked to everybody about it? I haven't talked to anybody yet. Just, oh. That's why I have it. Well. Maybe we'll yeah. stop a couple minutes early and discuss that now. You have to make, if you want to buy in from Ms. Smith, it has to be a dog of geese. She's, yeah. she's, she's not interested in cars. I'm about to do that to play full. She's not interested in cars at all. She likes geese. So what's the deal with the parking brake being set? It must be, because that's what's holding it on the hill.
had to pull the truck and the trailer apart, at least uh, figuratively, to expose that reaction at D to be able to find it. a free body diagram of both the truck and the trailer individually because you need D out there. Maybe you don't need to do both, but you do have to do at least one of them singularly to get uh, figure out what D is. You have to uh, expose it as it were. Let's see some of those. Decidedly free body diagram list today. Must be optional free body diagram day. Place to 
start. Okay, what force is on it? Of course, there's the weight, and that's what that uh, 14 kip number is. You know that's the weight, not the mass, because the units, pounds are units force. What other force is on it? Let's make it a free body diagram, take out the surface. The trailer, which is at that back link there, and how, what, what did you put in for the forces of it? Do you know what kind of connection it is? Nobody asked. Yeah, probably more like a ball and socket. It would be very much like a pin connection. Uh, but since it's a 2D problem, it would be the same as a pin connection. So what would you put in for the force there at D? Number of letters. Anything. The arrows. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do the free body diagram. Yes. Well, which, what's the direction of X? Well, I don't want to ask you what the direction of X and Y is because you tilted everything. But X and Y can be anything you want. That's arbitrary. Did anybody make a choice? So you went ahead and tilted the axes at 10 degrees. <clears throat> Sometimes it makes sense to make that decision a little bit after you understand what problems, what, uh, what forces are in the problem. We have two normal forces at the tires. Those are all perpendicular to the slope. The more forces uh, you have that are tilted, the more it uh, might make sense to tilt the uh, axes as well. But it's, it's arbitrary, whichever one you do. Any other forces? So I guess I could call that uh, By and see why. Those are both normal forces with the with the slope. Other forces, if any. The D, how'd you put D in? Do you know what the trailer's doing? If you do, can come up with it without thinking much. What's the trailer doing to the truck? What? Pulling it down the slope, quite likely. So we call that DX. And probably pushing down on it, the, the weight of the, the, in fact, I believe that's called the tongue weight of the truck. So that would be D1. Any other forces? What? Yes. Which is the braking force. So the brake is set at the rear wheel. So that's then the friction at the rear wheel. Any other forces on the truck? How many anomalies? It looks like five unknowns. So you're not going to be able to solve that. So then what? Yeah, you're going to have to do the trailer.
what force is on it. Uh, of course, we've got its weight. Does it matter where that weight acts, that center of gravity? Yeah, it does, because that the location of it is affected by the moment. And then we've got uh, a normal force. What did I call it? That's A. Is there a, uh, that's AY, I guess. Is there an AX? There would be if we had a, a trailer brake set. And then uh, at DY or at D, then you also put those forces uh, equal and opposite to what we have already shown. Any other forces? Forces on the trailer. And so three unknowns on that one. So that one you can solve. You could uh, solve for the rest of the uh, uh, reactions with the tires. You got it? You said do dx and dy. That's what I did. Well, 
says it. on the trailer and get get uh, get deep. And do and do nothing else, not not some of the forces is what I'm asking. You do just a sum of the moments and get deep. No, it's none of those forces. None of those forces line up well enough to single moment arm take care of all of them.
Ms. Smith, what did you pick? I picked about point A. About point A. Now, do you have enough information for the moments about all the other? Because we need the moment arm from there to every other force or its component. Yeah, we've got we've got all those little pieces in the uh, in the drawing. So A over to the uh, vertical component. We'll do something like that. The horizontal component. We'll do the opposite. Do we have to do both dx and dy? We already know dx. Uh, dx supplies what kind of moment with respect to A? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Yeah, it's clockwise since it's above. So maybe those little arrows help. Maybe they don't. So all the clockwise ones equal all the counterclockwise ones. So uh, yeah, let's. Let's get these components here. What's that component? Anybody have it on hand? Eight times sine ten. One point three nine. And that one. Okay, so we can just use those numbers. We don't have to write the trick functions. So. Uh, counterclockwise moment. Uh, that's the uh, x component 1.39 times its moment arm, which is that's this component six. times a moment arm of six. And then there's one other counterclockwise moment, the dy, which we don't know. We're looking for that one. And its moment arm with respect to A is what? For the dy, we need the distance from A to the vertical with D is 16 feet. That's the two, two uh, counterclockwise moments, and that's got to equal the clockwise moments uh, for there to be equilibrium. So that's the seven, eight, eight, and its moment arm. This is the uh, the, the uh, y direction component of the weight. It's moment arm with respect to A. The Y component is four feet away. And then the um, Y component of yeah, uh, DX. DX we know. 1.39. And its moment arm? It's the X component of D, and its moment arm above A is. 5.5. Units work. Kip feet, kip feet, kip feet. Every yeah, right. so we'll have units of kip feet. We can solve for dy then. And you should get. Uh, One point nine three. 
All right. Then you can go back and get the reaction that the wheels, if you need that, you can get AY. Just uh, go back into the second equation with some of the forces, you can come up with AY. And then you can take D into the truck. You'd only have the three unknowns, BX, PY, and CY. So you can check all of those. So I'll give you those uh, so you can double check them. I know you always go and do your work over again at home. So that's actually A Y. There was no other component on A. Anybody have any of these? BX, BY, any of those yet? BX is 382, 3.82. All of these are KIP. BY is 670. Now, that's the friction for, or BX is the friction force required to hold the trailer there. If you don't have that kind of uh, big enough grip, then the trailer is not going to stay. C is 9.02, and then we have DX and DY already. So you can check all of those. All right, we can get started on the on machine problem. Oh, and, and Wednesday, I'll introduce to you and talk a little bit about the semester project that's required for this course. Sorry, it wasn't my choice. It's in the catalog. We have to see that. All right, any questions about that before I erase it? We look at a, uh, a machine problem. All right. Nice big drawings help a lot on these, especially when there's not very much tilt to the slope, like there wasn't here, only 10 degrees. Okay, this one's going to be a lot more fun to draw for us. All right. What, uh, what I found out works best for drawing this is if we first lay out a couple points that are easiest. So we're going to have one point here and another point right below it. Uh, its distance isn't too critical. And this will be, let me get the label in there. Okay, that's, that's okay. And then we'll do a distance of 30. So we'll let that equal 30. And these are all millimeters. Then level with that, we have another point. And that's going to be point A. So just lay out the points first, and then we'll sketch in the, the piece when we're ready. Just is a lot easier to make it look uh, proportional. The next gap is 7. A little bit over two of the thirties. And that'll be point, uh, that's point nothing. Because then 30 below that, we have a point there. And that'll be point uh, B. If you have graph paper, this is even easier. Yeah, but just just get it approximate. It's just uh, a lot easier to do this problem if it uh, looks somewhat to scale, give or take a little bit. It's not an easy one to draw. All right, then another thirty.
and then one more 30 beyond that, and about the middle, we have a, a piece of something there. About in the middle doesn't matter, matter too much, uh, and that's what we're going to cut through. All right, now we can draw in the piece. What uh, a nice person. Uh, what color should this be? Of a green, green tool. All right. So this is the handle. And then the upper jaw.
suggestions of what to do. Just you could you could put your finger in there at E and just try it and see measure it that way. If we have to find the force at E, we might as well start with something that's there, whatever simplest. It looks like the lower jaw has the contact force there and a pin at D and C. The upper also has E, but it's got C, A, uh, yeah, it's not too much more. So might as well start, you gotta start with something. So we might as well start maybe with the lower jaw. We'll kind of, kind of keep them about where they are. Just less likely to make a mistake with them. So. So there's C and D. What kind of forces on that? Don't have to worry about its weight. A pair of pliers compared to an input force of 150 is pretty negligible. So, what kind of forces on it? Which is a pin? C. Actually, they both are. Alright, so go ahead and use the uh, standard XY directions, I guess. And maybe we can figure out the direction of those. Maybe we can, it's not a big deal. Any others? Force of E is going to look like what? Y component to it that that uh, is in the Y direction, I guess. Any X component to it? Why not? Why not? There's no contact force in the X direction. No. How how do we know there's no X component to E? What? It's more than that. It's that these two faces are parallel and lined up with the rest of the part anyway, which is already the next direction we picked. If it was such that uh, maybe you're trying to cut through something a little bit bigger or smaller and the pieces weren't parallel. There's the possibility then when you squeeze on it that the, the bolt or whatever it is could shoot out if the friction force, the sideways force wasn't adequate. But uh, a lot of these things like uh, vice grips and the like are adjustable to get as close to parallel as possible. Alright, so we've got uh, CX and CY. Um, probably just as easy to pick some directions, and since I've been through it, I'll pick, a, pick useful ones to us. Okay. Can uh, can we solve that? No. We're looking for E. 
but there's just too many unknowns in this to solve it. So we've got to go somewhere else. Where? thing is uh, since we can't solve it we have to go it's most useful to try to stay connected to it because if we're going to need C or, or D we might as well keep trying to get C or D so we have the choice of the upper jaw and arm or the lower one do the upper okay so that that looks something like uh, Something like that with a, a C in here. Now C is not lined up with those jaws where E is. And we'll have the equal and opposite forces to that. Because it's the other side of the pen, if you will. Any other forces? E on that one because it's also pushing down on the bolt. So whatever that's doing. Anything else? 150 newtons out at the end. That's the your input. And what else, if anything? Sooner or later, you're done. At point A. What's happening with that one? Any idea? Is there a chance to do anything more with it? No, not in terms of trying to solve it, just in trying to understand what, what the force is at A. What about AB? AB is a two force member which means we know that the forces associated with those two pins lie in that direction. We know that angle. So we could uh, actually draw that at that angle. And I believe it comes out to be... I believe it's 23.2. Check that. That's just the angle of the piece AB. Any other forces on it? Okay, we're going to have to wrap there so that uh, we'll, we'll resume with this 